Hi, welcome to Max 7 tutorial number 22, Sound from Waves. Well, wiping the slate clean or mostly clean for the moment, uh, we want to start out making sound from waves. Now, I was tempted to say analog, but um, that wouldn't quite be correct because there's nothing really analog on a computer anymore, but it is sound made from waves. And so, well, let's just dive right in and do things uh, the way we often do them, throwing them together. So, open up a new patcher, type the letter N, you get a new object there, and I'm just going to zoom, zoom in a bit so that we're kind of at least centrally located. And let's type cycle, and the cycle gets a tilde at the end. If you're not familiar with a tilde, on a standard keyboard, it's in the upper left. It's You have to uh, hold the shift key down. But as you type cycle out, you'll often see the cycle tilde. Generally in Max, anything with a tilde means it's dealing with wave forms. Not, let's just say usually, okay? So we'll go ahead and we type cycle, and we immediately option click on it, and we get our help file, which we unlock. Command E, Control E if you're on a PC. We steal the good parts, copying them, close that, get rid of that, paste that. Whoops, in the wrong place, but there it is. All right, so, whoops, I locked it already. I just wanted to move these apart a little bit so you could see what was going on here. And we'll just see what everything is here. Okay, so um, here's the cycle object, and right now it's set at 440, and we also have a 440 up here. This is a message that's going to substitute 440 for whatever string one is, and then a 20. And when you use the line tilde object, that's going to say, go to 440 in 20 milliseconds, that's so that we don't have any rough edges, and then it's going to go into cycle, and if you send cycle something that says 440, then um, it'll play a note that's 440 hertz, or cycles per second, and then this down here is a gain control, and I'm going to lock the patcher so I can turn it up, and we'll probably hear the 440. Oh, of course we don't, because this thing down here, which is our um, the audio for Max, the DSP, uh, turned on, and now let's turn this up and we should get that green, there we go. Oh, and you hear that lovely 440 tone, okay? So, well, I imagine you hear it. So I'm going to turn this down and you'll hear the notes start falling. Oh, right down to two. Right down to 220, we've got some nice reverberation going on in the control booth today. <laughs> um, so I'm going to turn that down a little bit. So we can make uh, notes out of this. This is a very sort of pure note. This uh, 220 is, by the way, um, I guess A above middle C. It's A2 or A3. I don't know. 110 is A1, 220 is A2, 440 is A3. So that's what cycle does. It puts out a, um, what, what do you call it? A sine wave, a beautiful sine wave at 400, or at whatever you set it to, um, 220 cycles per second right now, 440 originally. Well, what if we were gonna, well, what if we were gonna turn that down a little bit? Okay. What if we were gonna do something really kooky, like try to make a, um, a synthesizer out of this using our keyboard from before. So let's unlock our patcher and take this whole thing and move it down a little bit and come up here, type N, type B patcher. We get that beautiful blue box and we go and find our keyboard file. We've done this before. 
if uh, you haven't done the keyboard before, you could probably just put a um, K slider up there. But we're going to go find the keyboard that we made before. Mine is called Keyboard Johnny, right? There it is. Keyboard Johnny. I open it, and I know it has to be offset. I know from experience, negative 25, so I'm going to double click on the offset. Stick in a negative 25 there in the Y column. And that just makes it just right. We move the whole thing over there so we can see the pitch bend. And there it is. We have our outlets on here, which um, I put the, the hints in there. So this one puts out pitch. This one puts out velocity. This one is the voice select, otherwise known as uh, program change. This one is the tremolo on and off. And this one is the pitch bend value. So if we were going to do this for our new exciting electronic organ, um, we have a couple things that we can do to translate this into electronic sound, but we have one problem, and before we address that, which is this thing can only make one sound at a time. I needed that like a hole in the head. Um, <laughs> this thing can only make one sound at a time, so if we want to make it um, polyphonic, we need something to help do that. And it has a name that would remind you of polyphonic, and it is called poly. So let's go get our... I'm still going to make a little more room here. Okay, so type the letter N and type poly. And now we have a choice of regular poly here, or poly with a tilde. And we're going to use the regular poly in this case because this keyboard was built um, more or less in MIDI, and it puts out MIDI information. And this poly deals very nicely with MIDI information, and then we'll transform it later for the electronic information. So just pull it out under here, and if you hover over the inlets, you'll see this one is for velocity, lining up very nicely with that. And this one is for pitch, lining up very nicely with that. Now we're going to do some wacky tricks here, because we run into uh, an issue. So what, what does poly do? When you play notes, poly keeps track of what note you've played and whether it's down or up. So if I play like the C and then I play the D, it puts C in voice 1 and then D in voice 2. And when I let up on C, it's, it goes back to voice 1 and says, okay, here's a 0. And then if I let up on D, it goes to voice 2, etc. Poly keeps track of all that. Whoops. I forgot something for poly, which is poly needs to know how many voices we want. So let's put an argument in there for, um, well, you can put in as many as you want. Let's say six to keep it reasonable. So, whoops, they always change sizes when you change them. Okay, so this poly now knows that it's going to allocate notes coming into it it can play up to six notes at the same time and keep them completely separate. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use the spray object to, <laughs> to spray those voices out. So let's type an N, type spray, also six because we want six voices. And then we need to offset it because usually the first outlet in spray is zero but poly counts starting at the number 1, so we're going to say 6, and then we're going to put in a 1 for the outlet, and then we're going to do something that there's absolutely no instruction to do. We're going to type another 1, and that changes spray from um, a spray that handles single numbers to a spray that handles lists, and that's important because the MIDI notes are sent out as short lists, as you might remember, pitch and then velocity. So um, this is a little secret from me to you. That it really doesn't seem to be included here. Maybe it was included in previous versions uh, that would explain 
w w that would explain that. So, whoops. <laughs> okay, so Polly has this bunch of outlets. This first one over here is for overflow notes. We're not going to do anything with that. This is for velocity, this is for pitch, and this is for voice number. So when we send this message of three, which we're going to do by type N and type PAC, P-A-C-K, zero space zero space zero. There's also a space between PAC and the first zero. So we don't care about the overflow nodes, but we do care about this one, which will come out first, which will be velocity, and this one, which will come out second, which will be pitch. And then this one will be the voice number. And then they'll get all packed and sent as a list. The first, um, the first number that comes out, um, this is sort of like flipping cards over and back. The first number that comes out of here will actually be the last one that was put in. And that will be the voice number. And that will determine which outlet it's going to come out and then the other two numbers will come out. So let's just put um, a message um, under two boxes here and you can sort of see how poly works. So there's two messages and we'll just connect to the left-hand inlet of each one of them. Then we'll lock our patcher so we don't get too many objects going here. And um, hey, I've got to shut that off. It's driving me crazy. Okay. Um, and we'll just play a note. So first I'm going to play the E there, and over here I get 5276, because my volume is at 76. Now I'm going to push the next, the F, and I get 5376. Now I'm going to let up on the E, and I get 520, and I let up on the F, and I get 530. So we can see that Polly is keeping track of which one of these it comes out. Okay, so um, we can see that it's working. So we can get rid of these messages unless you like just like watching them. And then we'll consider um, we've found a way to distribute them. Now we just have to find a way to use them. Now we're not really using the keyboard like we're not touching it we're using it as an input device so i'm going to move it up here because we need a little tiny bit of room to work under under here the list coming out here as we saw in the message is two numbers so we're going to have to unpack it so make a new object with an n and say unpack zero space zero And what we'll get out of here, I guess we may as well look at them. I'm going to type I, and then I'm going to duplicate it. And uh, let's lock our patcher and look at that for a minute. Okay, so here we go back to our, whoops, there's F, 5376. And there's when I let off at 53.0. So what we want to do is change this 53 into a cycles per second number, which we call frequency. In max, there is an object to do that. Unlock your patcher and type N and type M for MIDI to TO F. M to F. And, uh, that will output that will output um, a number that's a frequency. So if we connect this to that, or just move this over a little bit, we'll be able to do that. Okay, so let's take a look at that actually functioning now. Look at that. We push down the C, and we got. 48 at 76, and it comes up as 130.8, and I'm fairly certain that is a C, but the way that we could check it, remember I said uh, that an A2, where's A? Is that A? Yes. 
So we see A up here on the keyboard, and down here we see 220. So it's doing this absolutely correctly. Our other number coming in here is the velocity, and we have to change that to this um, cycle per second, uh, excuse me, I have max on the brain here, the decibels, which goes from uh, negative infinity, about negative 70 up to zero. Woo. I bet I can't. Oh, I can turn my volume down there, and I'll just pretend it doesn't exist. Watch out. You will blast your ears right out if you do this, and you don't have an external volume control. So the volume is really loud right now. We just can't hear it. Um, and this goes all the way up to zero, and then it amps up. Well, for safety's sake, let's just keep it going from negative 70 to zero. So we need a number for this that goes from negative 70 to zero. And the way that we get that is with another awesome object. Here, we'll just throw that away, which is called scale. So little new, type scale, no tilde, just scale. And then type the number that's coming in is going to be between zero, space, one, two, seven. So it's telling you what the scale coming in is. And now the scale going out is going to be negative 70 space zero. That's the way it works. So this number, which is going to be our volume, coming in here, and uh, we'll put a number a number below that. Um, since it's scaling it, I'm going to put a float number on, under there because uh, we may find that it it outputs it as a float number. So, um, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Lock your patcher real quick and just check it. So push any key down and you should get, um, so we get a negative 28 and then it goes down to negative 70. That's zero in gain control land. There's a, we could use a different, we could use an, an audio gain, a regular gain, and then set it at zero. That would be another way to do it. But let's work with what we got here. So negative 70, and then if we were to turn that all the way up, it would probably go up to zero almost. So unlock your patcher again, and then this negative 70 is going to get connected to the left-hand inlet of our gain control. And with all of that hooked together, let's see if voice number one works. So we lock our patcher and, oops, turn the volume down. <laughs> nice. Um, you know, I'll do that again just in case that was too quiet for you. But you'll notice if you play a second key while you're holding one, even though I'm playing it, you don't see it because it's coming out the next thing now, waiting for a new key. So um, in Max, we always have this great thing that we can do, which is encapsulate. So now that we've got this part working, hopefully, we're going to unlock our patcher, select all of these, and Shift, Command, E, or, <laughs> whoa, <laughs> um, Shift, Command, E, or just uh, go right uh, up to the edit part and you can find encapsulate under there. It's the, it's right down here, but I'm not going to click it because I've already done it. So let's call this um, patcher your name, Johnny in my case. Uh, Johnny, Johnny cycle. <laughs> One word, because patchers get confused. Okay, so, um, and please don't just name this cycle, because if you end up having to hand this in to me, then you'll end up with problems, because we'll all have the same name on our cycle patchers. Okay, so now that we have Johnny cycle, we can just take, um, we can just copy 
let's say, six of these. and connect them to these spray outlets. And then these outputs here to left and right. You can hold shift down and then let it up for each one of these. Or you can actually do this, which is go down to here, click on this one, now hold the shift key, and go to all the left outlets. Oh, and the, the right. Oh, right. Can't do that. Okay, now I'm stuck with this wire. Hit Command and click, and it goes away. And then you can do that for the right-hand ones, too. Shift and click, click, click. Let off the shift, and one last click. Now we have all of our and we don't need that label. Um, now we have all of our cyclers hooked up to um, our spray, pack, and poly. And so poly is going to be distributing these. We should be able to play six notes at a time. So let's give it a go. There's... Oh, somebody did not lock their patcher. It was me. Okay, locking my patcher this time so I don't get a whole plethora of things. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Wait, is that five or... One more. Can't get it. Interesting. I'm only getting six of them, which suggests to me that somewhere along the line I've offset the wrong way. Um, let's change this one in spray back to zero. And I like it expanded out so that it looks cool. There we go. And uh, let's see if that works. No. Poly 6 is only getting five voices. What have I done wrong? Maybe one of my Johnnies isn't. One, two, three, four, five, six. I promise. I will... Darn it, I'm going to figure it out right now. I don't care what anybody says. Okay, here we go. Sorry, this is going to be kind of boring if I have to troubleshoot the whole thing while I'm recording. This is, I didn't see this coming as a... I'm going to just check the first and last, since they're usually the, the, pr the troublemakers. It's never the in-between ones. So let's see here. Lock patcher and... Okay, with five down, I've already reached six, so I don't know why it's not... Hmm. Okay, then let's put this back to one. I wish it would just stay put once you made it the right size. There we go. And we'll lock it again and see. That comes out the first one. There's the second one. Third, fourth, fifth. But the sixth one won't do it. Oh, you know, um, the problem might actually be the keyboard itself. That's what it is. The keyboard's only set for five-person polyphony, and I can't change it because it's in a B patcher. Well, we made too many we made too many voices, but it's always nice to have an extra. So there, that's what the problem is. It's the it's the keyboard itself. Nothing that we did. We've been perfect. It's so nice to know that. 
Um, well, very good. Now we have an electronic keyboard made from our beautiful um, pre-made keyboard. And in the next video, we are going to figure out uh, what to do with these other effects here. And it should be a lot of fun. So I look forward to that. Patch well, and I will see you next time around. Enjoy.